good afternoon. I'm uh, speaking to Professor Pierre de Vos. Uh, this is after Judge Dikhang Moseneke released his report uh, regarding a possible postponement for the elections on the municipal elections on 27 October. Uh, Judge Moseneke released the report and uh, he indeed proposes that the uh, elections uh, are to be postponed to February next year and uh, to hear what the implications could be if it is decided, because the IEC still has to decide about that. Uh, we are talking to Pierre about this. Good afternoon, Pierre. Good afternoon. So, um, uh, here we are. Um, uh, it's not a surprise, I must say, that the, the, uh, the proposal for postponement came. Uh, but it has uh, implications. What can that be? Well, the problem is that the constitution says that um, the local uh, councils, they stop having authority and operating basically on the 1st of November, 90 days after the term ended. So any postponement beyond that would require some legal maneuvering to allow for this so that the councils can keep on operating legally. So that either means an amendment of the constitution or the commission, uh, Justice Mosenegi suggested that um, the court is approached and the court is asked to make an order in which it basically suspends that provision of the constitution which has never been done in South Africa before. And even the judge says he doesn't know whether the court will agree with this or not. Did something like this happen somewhere around the world anyway before? Well, the, the, the report also makes clear that in, especially in the first few months of COVID, various elections around the world were um, postponed. But uh, I'm not, you know, I don't know the details of the constitutional details, probably not in cases where there was a constitutional um, time frame that had to be met. Um, so the, the question is uh, whether it can be done here and what is there any legal mechanism that practically is actually going to make it possible or not? So, so let me ask that question. Uh, is it possible to do it here? Um, well, you can amend the constitution, but as Justice Mosenegi said, if you're going to extend the five-year term, you almost certainly indirectly amending section one of the constitution. That is the founding value, and it requires a 75% majority in the National Assembly. Uh, so 75% of the MPs must vote for it. This doesn't seem that likely, I think, also, there are certain time requirements, so you have to wait 30 days before you can even introduce the amendment of the constitution, then you have to wait another 30 days before you can debate. And so three months is cutting it very fine for the amendment. The, the, yeah, so, and, and whether the court will make an order to suspend the provision of the constitution, basically to give effect to other provisions about free and fair elections, it has never been done. Uh, all bets off. I have no idea whether the court will agree to this or not. Pierre, we are all well aware of, of what can happen if you just uh, like that uh, decide to change the constitution um, and, and what implications that can have, uh, especially in, in, a, in a country as uh, uh, unstable as South Africa is at the moment. But uh, we are in um, extraordinary times. Um, can't that be a motivation to, to, to make some sort of um, uh, special arrangement? I find it a very difficult question to answer because on the one hand, also as Justice Mosenegi pointed out, you really don't want to uh, mess with the principle that there must be regular elections because the, the slippery slope argument, if you're going to postpone an election now, next time when a, a incumbent government is feeling threatened, they might want to do the same thing. So there are principled reasons uh, to be worried about this. 
I think the real question is um, how impossible is it to have a free and fair election? An election that is not perfect, but um, at least um, is more or less free and fair. If it is completely impossible, it might be justified, I think. Um, if the election is going to be more difficult, if it's going to be uh, not as perfect as we want it to be, I don't think that personally, at least, I don't think that is a good enough reason to make this exception. Um, and for the court, if they are asked to make such an order, to order basically a suspension of a provision in the constitution itself. Let's look at um, the history of our uh, elections since uh, 1994. None of those have ever been perfect in any way. But uh, most of us will agree that it has been to a certain extent more or less free and, and, and fair. What is it in this coming election that can, uh, that can really be so serious uh, threatening the freeness and fairness of, of the elections? Well, the Justice Mosinekis report mentions a few things. Uh, the one is that there needs to be um, a whole host of things need to happen. For example, there needs to be a voter registration. If people are not registered, then they cannot vote and then they are disenfranchised. So that's quite an important issue. If, if people are not given the opportunity to register, it disenfranchises them. That would be a fundamental breach of their rights. The other issues are more practical in nature and the question of um, the risk posed to the IC and to voters. I am not so convinced that that risk is that high or that it is going to be that much better in February. Um, but the, the, the Deputy Chief Justice, former Deputy Chief Justice, seemed to think um, that is fundamental. Um, the difficulty here is we don't know what the COVID is going to do. S many of the experts who spoke to Justice Mosinek has said by October, we will be in a flat um, part of the wave. It will be at the low end. So if that is true, then the election, if there can be voter registration, the election might actually be relatively open and free and fair. Um, uh, but the, this is one of the big problems. We really don't know what COVID is going to do. This is the first time I have ever, uh, in the history of speaking to you in interviews and reading your uh, your um, uh, articles, that I that you don't have an answer. <laughs> yes, but so, I, so it must be it must be really uh, something so very very uh, uh, um, not sure. Yes, so I wrote something about this last month and I said there are only bad options and worse options because whatever you do, there's going to be something will have to give. So there will be some um, downside to it. So no matter what happens, um, you're going to have problems. And even if you postpone it, there's no guarantee that the election will be perfect in February. So um, it is one of those things, if you live through a global pandemic, maybe it is to be expected that there will be situations where there are really just bad options. 